Hey everyone, welcome back to I Dream of Indie. Old Gamer Joe is here with you today for another review. We're looking at Danger Scavenger, which was just recently released onto Steam. This one will be heading quarter four of 2020 to the PlayStation 4, the Switch, and the Xbox One as well. It was developed and published by Star Drifters, and it is a top down roguelike shooter with a lot of loot to collect. Danger Scavenger doesn't really present much of a story whatsoever to the player, so I did have to read into things a little bit. The very basic premise is that AI robots are attacking society, they're turning evil, and a group called the Scavengers rises to the occasion and wants to get rid of them. Danger Scavengers can be enjoyed in either single player or couch co-op. You'll eventually be able to unlock a few more characters for a total of four. The developer is also promising more than four characters in the future, so you can look forward to that, but each of these scavengers does have unique attributes that make them feel different from one another. Captain Jay, who is the character you'll start with and is the most balanced of the bunch, has the ability to rain down bullets on characters, while other characters like Hunter may have less health, but comes with the ability to cloak themselves in invisibility and is also quite a bit faster than some of the other characters. Favoring speed myself, I enjoyed Hunter the most of the characters, but it will take a little time to unlock the other ones too, and it's up to you ultimately which one you enjoy the most. They all have their pros and cons. Character selection, as well as the ability to access the co-op mode and craft items is all done in a small hub area. However, once you hop on your bike, it's time for the real action. This game takes place on the rooftops and you'll have to battle through wave after wave of enemy in order to access elevators. Sometimes there are two, sometimes there's only one to choose from in order to continually progress upward. Combat and aiming is fairly simple. You have the ability to shoot enemies with a variety of different guns in this game. Quite a good variety too. I enjoyed all of the different guns that I would find along the way, including lasers, machine guns, and there's also some cool melee weapons that you can use. Clearing out enemies is the name of the game, as you won't be able to progress further without entirely clearing a room of all its enemies first. After a floor is clear, like I mentioned, you may find yourself choosing between two paths, but there's a little map indicator that allows you to see where a path leads. One path may lead to a very rare item but have a ton of enemies for you to worry about and another path may be a little safer and help you to get closer to your goal, a boss at the top. Aiming and dodging very carefully as the screens can get pretty chaotic will be paramount to your success in this game and you will have to rely on some of those abilities that I mentioned earlier. Thankfully, Danger Scavenger will also allow you to shop a little bit on your way up using scrap that you've acquired off of enemies that you've defeated. While not every floor has a shop, you'll want to take advantage of the ones that do as you'll be able to equip items that will help you in terms of your statistics as well as grab restoration items to heal your health. Danger Scavenger has a ton of loot, in fact one of my favorite attributes of the game was finding other weapons that will assist you, including saws that will buzz around you and take out enemies, as well as turrets which will supply fire. The game always feels at its best to me anyways when you're tearing through these hordes of machines, all while you have all these cool upgrades to help you. So there is a risk reward element to Danger Scavenger depending on the path that you choose. Do you want to go for a more difficult path and get some awesome loot, or do you want to play it safe to get through the floor and get to the boss? Regardless of the path you choose, you could expect to play a lot of the same areas over and over again and die a lot. That is the nature of this genre after all, and it's no different here. To help a little bit though, your character's score points will carry over to the next run. These points will then allow you access to some of the game's better gear, including weapons that will help you a lot in your battle, as well as items that can also assist you. Fair warning though, if you don't like this style of gameplay, if you don't like roguelikes, then this isn't going to change your mind whatsoever. Visually, Danger Scavenger does have a cyberpunk theme to it, but it's not the most realized one that I've seen, a little bit uninspired and not as good as some of the other cyberpunk style games that I've played this year in terms of looks. But it's not a horrible looking game either, in fact some of the explosions at times, particularly when you're really causing a lot of chaos, are fun to look at, so while I wasn't blown away by this aesthetic, I can still appreciate some of the finer details and effects that are in the game, and I also will say that each character has a unique personality, despite the fact that you can't see all of the details of those characters, because things are a little zoomed out. There are over 30 enemy types, which I can definitely appreciate, there's also unique bosses, and a ton of weapons like I mentioned, all of which have decent visual effects to go along with them. So while the presentation is not the most inspired I've seen, or the most visually effective, it's not half bad, it definitely serves the purpose. I can't say the same for the soundtrack though, which is really a miss in this game. These are some of the worst electronic drum beats I've heard in a while, and the synth that backs them isn't very impressive either. It almost kind of reminded me of my days in high school messing around with Fruity Loops, if any of you remember that program. That's a little bit disappointing, especially given the fact that so many cyberpunk games have already come out this year, and most of 
of them have featured really excellent soundtracks. That said, while the music may have you reaching for the mute button if you're anything like me, at least the sound effects aren't half bad. Most of your weapons will sound pretty decent, and also the explosions are effective, so it's a little bit of a mixed bag here. The soundtrack was not impressive to me at all, but the sound effects are decent enough. Dangerous Scavenger is a pretty fun game to play. I could see it being a lot of fun in co-op. Unfortunately, I didn't have a partner at the time of this review to play with, but I will say that this game is pretty addicting. I was more willing to overlook some of the presentation shortcomings of the game because the core gameplay is really responsive and fun, and I enjoyed collecting all of the different loot and trying to progress further and further up these elevators. I do wish Dangerous Scavenger took more advantage of its aesthetic, but it doesn't, unfortunately. However, it's still a very playable game that is a lot of fun and can be addicting. If you can't get enough of your roguelikes and you want a dash of cyberpunk mixed with a hearty helping of loot, then you could definitely do a lot worse than Danger Scavenger. So roguelike fans, will you be picking up Danger Scavenger? Let us know in the comments below, and if you have enjoyed our content today, please do consider helping us to bring a voice to the voiceless ones by pushing that subscribe button. There's also a ton of other ways to support us down in the description box if you so wish. However you end up supporting I Dream of Indie, we thank you so much for doing so.